Welcome back to another Scratch Genius video. This is the part 2 on my how to make a 3D effect in Scratch series. Last episode, we made models in Magica Voxel and then went through a process to put them into Scratch. However, they look kind of flat, so in this tutorial, we will be adding some shading that you see right here to make the models look a lot better and a lot more 3D. I do have some more tutorials planned in the future, such as um, even more advanced shading, however that is still in the works and it is not finished yet. And maybe also some different projections, so you can have different angles to view the 3D models at. So I would recommend that you subscribe, so you don't miss any of these future videos. Anyway, without further ado, let's start. Alright, so here's where we left off in last tutorial. The first thing we're going to do is create two new variables to keep track of the sun's direction and the length of the shadows. So we're just going to go over to variables and make it two variables. I'm going to call them sun direction. Make sure they are out for all sprites. And then shadow length. Now you can choose to show them, you can hide them. What I'd like to do is I'm going to switch them over to the sliders by double clicking on them. Or you can also right click and select slider. So now we can slide them and adjust them while we are viewing the project. So at the beginning when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to set them both to some specific numbers that I like. So for the shadow length, I'm just going to choose 1 for now. And the sun direction, I'm going to choose 50. However, this doesn't really matter. You can make it whatever you want. So the next thing that we want to do is create some clones for these shadows. In this create clones loop, we're going to create one clone which is going to be part of the main model and then another clone which is going to be a shadow. However, we have to keep track of which clones are shadows and which ones are part of the regular model. So for that, we're going to have another variable and call it something like is shadow. I'm going to make this for this part only and this is very important because each uh, clone is going to create its own copy of this variable so each clone can remember if it is a shadow or not. If this is for all sprites, it's just going to be one global variable that's going to be the same for all of the clones and it is not going to work. I'm going to hide that variable and then now when we are creating the first clone, I'm going to make sure to set is shadow to zero so that that clone knows that it is not a shadow and it is part of the main model. Then I'm going to set is shadow to 1, which means it is a shadow. And then it is going to create another clone, which is going to be the shadow clone. So now we want the shadows to look dark, so they actually look like real shadows. That's going to occur here and when I start as a clone block, we're going to use the brightness block so that we can uh, make it look all dark and black, just like a real shadow. So we're going to check if it is a shadow. Actually, I'm going to use the if then block. And then I'm going to check if is shadow equals one. It is going to go to the back layer so that we see it behind the model. And then it is going to set the brightness effect to a negative number. I will choose like make negative 90. So that way it looks all dark. And I'm going to put that at the beginning. So now if we click play, you can see that actually nothing has changed. And that is because the shadow clones are doing exactly what the regular clones are doing, but it is right behind. So since they're all right behind this model exactly, of course we won't see it. So we have to have them behave differently in the sense that they go away from the direction of the sun. So we're going to check if is shadow equals one. So an if else block. And if it does, it is going to change the X and Y. We're going to get into that in a minute. Or if it is just a regular part of the model, then we're going to change the Y by the clone ID times one. Now we can leave these go to x and y coordinates and the point and direction block outside of the if else because both the regular clones and the shadow clones are going to have to go to the main sprite and then point in its direction. The only difference is going to be how they change their position after that. 
So to make these shadows point away from the sun, we're going to need to use some trigonometry. Now if you do not know what trigonometry is or how it works, it's okay because you don't really need to know it to follow the tutorial. However, of course, I do recommend that you know what you are working with. So in uh, very basic terms that I will try to explain it in, the cosine of a specific angle will tell you what the x position would be if you were to point in this specific direction and then walk one step. And then sine does the same thing, but it tells you the y position instead. These are the calculated values if the angle were an example of 35 degrees. So we want to know uh, what position we would be in if we were to point in the sun's direction and then walk one step. However, we don't want to just walk one step. We want each clone to walk further than the previous clone did. So that way you can actually see the model being projected across. It doesn't just look like one flat uh, blob like it does now. So we're going to use two multiply blocks. The first one is going to be the clone ID. And this could be all that we needed if we wanted to. However, remember that we also made a shadow length variable so that you could change the length of the shadows that you were casting. So I'm going to multiply it by the shadow length as well so that you can have longer shadows. So now that we have the multiplication ready, we're going to multiply the cosine of sun direction times the shadow length times the clone ID. The same thing for the y. Make sure to put the cosine with the x and the sine with the y. And now, ta-da! We have our shadows are done. Of course, we can change the direction of the sun and then also change the length of the shadows. However, as you can see, if you change the shadow length to be too great of a number, then it will be extending far beyond the actual amount of clones that there is and you can see this artifact. However, I hope that you won't ever need such long shadows, and if you really do, you can always increase the resolution by creating more clones. Just make sure that you always stay below Scratch's 300 clone limit. One last thing that you can do if you want is right click on the sliders and click change slider range. So now you can change the minimum and the maximum value that you can make the slider. So what I'm going to do for the sun direction is I'm going to set the maximum value to 360 degrees so that you can turn the shadows all the way around. And I'm going to set the shadow length, slider range, from minimum of 0, 0.00 and a maximum of 5.00. Now adding these 0 0.00s will make it that instead of sliding between whole numbers, you can also slide through decimals. So with the 0, .00, you can smoothly go and select decimal numbers. However, without it, if we just put 0 and 5, it will snap between integers. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, you can leave a thumbs up below and also subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. If you need help with anything, I will always be glad to help you anywhere. You can message me in the comments below, you can leave a comment on my Scratch profile, or the most convenient way, where if you were to join my Discord server, whose link is up here, or you can also look at the link in the description. In the server, not only can you get help from me and other Scratchers, but you can also share your projects and talk with other people about Scratch. Anyway, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.